Walter, your display is at 69, so maybe you take it to 100. Okay. Yeah. Slideshow. Um, let me see. Have to enable slideshow. Let me see. Slideshow, slideshow. Okay, how about that? Are you able to see the full screen? Yes. yes. We can see. Okay. I think yes. I think Chris, we are safe. Yes. Yeah, okay. We are now good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. That network. Walter, I'm also giving. Walter. Yes, please. Walter. I'm also yes, giving you permission to record this. I'm also giving you permission to record this uh, uh, meeting. Okay, please. Yeah, please. Uh, you can go on and uh, record it. Uh, you will share with me so that uh, people who, who have not been able to attend can, can access the recording. Okay, please. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, you can record it to your... Okay, Chris, recording has started. We can proceed. Great. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be, I'll be at the meeting. There are so many in the waiting room, so I'll be at the meeting, all of them. Let me just enable okay. auto admit. Let me see. That's all right, we can proceed. Great. We are good to go. Just a moment. Okay, good, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very sorry today uh, is a very unique day. The coaching session for today is uh, quite unique because my internet cannot work due to absence of power. And thank God Walt has been able to, to assist us project the project the, the, the training, the presentation. So we will be moving on. Walt, I ask you to go back to the first uh, grade. Uh, my name is Christopher Mulindua. I work with uh, Prime Pork, Uganda Limited. I am also a technical assistant for the New Science Concentrates uh, Nutritional Products uh, here in, uh, in Uganda. And I also support it choice genetics. Uh, Walter, I will request you to admit new members because they keep disturbing my screen and you can imagine it is a smaller screen. 
Okay. Yes, I'm admitting them all. So, uh, okay, great. Okay, I think I'll switch off my video because it is not that necessary. Uh, I think a few people can see, so let's switch it off. Great. So, um, last week, we started discussing pig farm management. And uh, we were unable to finish up with uh, what we had to, to finish up with. And that's where we are going to begin today and make sure that uh, the topic is concluded. And the main issue that time we were talking about uh, batch following. But before we reached batch following, we had quite uh, an interesting discussion about why uh, managing a pig enterprise successfully needs you to plan it from the start of the farm. So if we can move on, Walter. In the training last week, we looked at two areas of management and this includes the farm production management and the farm business management. So we will be taking some time to tackle uh, farm production management. It's a huge topic. And then we will conclude with uh, the farm business management. So we will be handling those two areas under management. So the farm production management, we discussed last uh, Saturday that you have to consider your farm capacity because that will help you to identify a proper location for your farm. It will help you uh, work out the biosecurity plans and to ensure that you're not in a, in a neighborhood that will be, uh, that, that will put your farm to a disadvantage. When a pig farm is situated in a congested neighborhood, the chances of compromising biosecurity are very high. So we also talked about genetics. This is an area where you need to also plan very well. You need to know the genetics you're going to use, where you're going to get it from, and so that you can plan the logistics very well. Previously, pigs used to come by plane, but today we've been successful importing pigs from South Africa using road transport. So all these issues are issues that you must think about when you're just uh, planning to set up a farm. So this is where management starts. Proper planning leads to proper management. Management is just an execution. So you need to plan the farm production cycles. And this, this is uh, mainly related to batch following. And this is our main focus for today. You got to also think about nutrition because you need to do nutritional management as well the feeds, the type of feeds you're going to use, in case you're going to use additives, which particular additives are you going to use? If you're going to use, um, if you're going to use um, concentrates, which particular concentrates are you, are you going to use and how are they going to affect the profitability of your enterprise? You have to think about water, you have to think about the administration of these feeds, the troughs that you're going to use, is the system automated or not, the logistics of getting these feeds, all that is under management. You got to think about the breeding programs. How are you going to do the synchronization? This is under breeding management. 
how are you going to do the synchronization, the soil replacement and retention strategy, the logistics, etc., etc. You also have to look at the health and biosecurity. Uh, recently, and even until now, many farms are closing in central Uganda due to African swine fever outbreaks. But this doesn't mean that every farm will actually experience an outbreak. So how do you keep your farm safe so that you don't get, um, you don't experience African swine fever outbreaks? That is under healthy and biosecurity management. So those are issues that you should be very conscious about. Um, you got to look at waste and how you're going to manage it. You got to look at housing and how you're going to manage it. You got to look at the operations and how you're going to manage it. You're going to keep records. Are you going to use technology? You need the systems. You need the protocols. You need to think about administration. This will ease farm management in general once your farm starts operation. Walter, when I keep quiet, you go to the next slide, please. That, that will be the signal. Okay. So farm production cycles. Farm production cycles. The, I'm, I'm just reviewing what we looked at last uh, week. I request you, ladies. I request you, ladies and gentlemen, to mute your microphones. I request you to mute your microphones so that you don't disorganize the meeting. Please be good and mute your microphones. I request you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll mute those. Uh, I'll mute those who are making noise. Perfect. Okay, so we are looking at farm production cycles. This is very, very important. In Uganda, consistency in supply of pork is, is very limited. And it is limited due to the fact that farmers just keep pigs. Their production cycles are not, are not planned to meet both their profit needs and market requirements. A farmer who will be successful needs to keep in touch, to keep in a link, in, in link with, with their market. The market must know when your animals will be ready for slaughter and how many times they have to buy animals for slaughter from you actually. And you also need to know when you have to do which activity on farm and in which time frame. So farm production systems depends on market requirements. What does the market require of you? This is very important. If uh, need be, you need to do some research to properly understand your market. You need to think about the resources available, how much money you have at hand, in order for you to execute whichever production cycles that you're thinking about, you need to think about the, uh, the target annual income, how much money you want to make, the production systems. Which production system are you going to implement? Is it going to be an outdoor system or it is going to be an indoor system? Because Sometimes some numbers are not compatible with some systems. Then you have to think about the number of sows, 
and then later you have to go into batch following. Okay, so batch following. This is where we stopped last week and we are continuing. It's going to be our area of concentration today. Uh, batch following is a very interesting topic. And because it is very interesting, I will even cut my pace further so that we understand whatever that we are talking about uh, today. Batch following, batch following has many advantages. Of course, when you don't do batch following, you do what, uh, uh, what we call the continuous production system. A system where you have no planning at all. It's the normal, it's almost the normal system. Pigs come on heat when they want. They follow when they want. They go to market when they want. And there is no proper planning whatsoever. With batch following, you have a plan. You have a schedule of activities and a schedule of how things will be moving on farm. Uh, these are some of the advantages of batch following. Batch following simplify, simplifies stocking. It is very easy for you to stock your farm when you batch it, because this can even be carried out in phases. If let's say you have five groups on your farm, like you can see in the picture uh, next to this, uh, uh, to the wordings, uh, you can decide that I will stock my pigs maybe in a, in, a, in a period, in an interval of two weeks, an interval of four weeks, an interval of whichever that uh, you want to have the pigs on farm, depending on your programming. This as well reduce housing costs. You don't need to prepare several, um, you don't need to prepare several following units. You have a defined number of following units to maintain on farm because you know the number of animals that you will be following at a given period of time. Batch following promotes farm healthy because it is an all in, all out system whereby when pigs are lactating, they are lactating as a batch. And when they are removed from uh, a following unit, you have the opportunity of disinfecting, disinfecting it and making it clean for the next batch of animals to utilize. This reduces chances of transmitting uh, contagious diseases and even any other infectious agents, bacteria, uh, or viruses, uh, they can be dealt with when you're doing uh, batch following. Uh, batch following also simplifies record keeping because you're dealing with the small groups of animals. Even though you have a thousand pigs on your farm, they will be smaller if they are batched. So because you're dealing with the smaller groups and you know the health of those groups, groups which were introduced into the farm in the same period of time and in groups that, of, that, that were of uniform age, so you can easily deal with record keeping. And in case there is any fertility issue, it is very easy for you to work it out because the groups you're maintaining in each particular group, uh, in each particular batch, uh, the, the pigs you maintain there have uniform characteristics. They are related in a given manner. So it simplifies labor planning. You know who to work in the dry cells and how many dry cells they'll be working at in a given period of time 
you know who to work in the following unit, you know who to work in the winner's unit, in the finisher's unit, in the grower's unit. So batch following simplifies labor planning. And it also creates a rhythmic epoch slaughter pigs marketing. You have a consistent outflow of pigs for slaughter to the market. Your buyers, your buyers uh, have an idea of when to expect you to be in the market. They have an idea of when your pigs will be ready and of when your pigs will be taken to the market. So there is nothing to worry about. Okay, so hope that is understood. So this is why batch following is, by the way, very, very important. So let's go to a practical example here. We are looking at um, a farmer who is planning to sell an average of 70,000 kilograms of pork per year. What should this farmer think about? And how does such a farmer plan his farm in order to ease production management? When I talk about production management, I mean management of health, management of genetics, management of breeding, and management of, of nutrition. So this particular farmer has to think twice. Whenever you think about batch following, like we said earlier, it, it, it should start with the income that you need to, that you want to make annually. Once you establish the amount of money that you want to make every year, then you think about the price. These are very important for you to note so that you, 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 you will flow together. First, before you do batch following, you have to think about the amount of money that you want to make annually, okay? Uh, then you have to think about uh, uh, what the market can consume, actually. Then you think about the number of pigs. No, no, no. Before you think about the number of pigs, you have to establish the average price per kilogram of pork in the market. After establishing the average price per kilogram of pork, then you determine the amount of pork that you needed to produce to be able to generate the income that you're looking at every year. So after understanding the number of pigs, uh, the, the amount of pork, then you have to look at genetics. Which genetics am I going to use? That's where research becomes very, very important. So you go, Start about the different genetic lines, see their performance, see their yielding, carcass yielding capacity, see their nutritional requirements, see their growth capabilities, and then start to uh, start planning accordingly. So how does uh, the starting, sorry, how, 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 how should this, the, the planning evolve. That's what we are going to talk about right now. So here we have a farmer who is looking at producing an average of 70,000 kilograms of pork every year. So this farmer has to stock his farm and uh, down under parenting are the basics that you have to look at. You have to look at the litter size, the number of piglets 
that each sow is going to be producing annually. Here we put a projection of 25 piglets per year. You have to look at the following rate. So to go back a bit, the liter size uh, means, uh, the, 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 the liter size means the number of piglets uh, a sow produce. So here we are summing it to, to annual uh, production. So here we are, we are meaning the 25, the figure 25 means that we are expecting a minimum of 25 piglets from each sow. And I will show you how we get, uh, I, I, I go to this figure later. So the following rate, the following rate is simply the percentage of pigs that follow or pigs that give birth out of the number of those that were inseminated. So the number inseminated is the 100%. And here you can see only 95% of the 100% inseminated followed. So our following rate is 95%. Uh, the so lifetime, you will hear talking about solo longevity, this simply means the average lifetime a sow spends on your farm. The amount of time a sow stays at your farm before you cut it out or before you eliminate it. Choose that he is all herself from a farm. Sometimes issues are related to poor performance. Sometimes they are related to poor production. Sometimes, okay, that is performance. Sometimes it's due to lameness. Uh, sometimes it's due to poor healthy and many other reasons. Um, so here, our soul lifetime is uh, we expect at least six liters. So for each sow that we maintain on farm, we expect that it will, it will produce a minimum, a maximum of six liters, like it will give birth six times before it is sold out or before it is removed from the farm. Uh, the following index or the following interval means the number of liters in a simple term, the number of liters that, uh, uh, okay, the length of time from one liter to the other. But we also use it to determine the number of liters a sow produce per year. Okay the number of liters a sow produce per year. We will discuss more about this later and you'll get to understand it. So the soil replacement rate, by the way, all this involves some small mathematics. You don't need very hard mathematics. It is, I think, uh, primary school mathematics. So um, I guess you will understand it. So to get, to calculate your theoretical, I call it theoretical because this is only a plan. Something can change. When you're dealing with uh, livestock, this word is life. Life is, is life, it's from life. And the stock is stock. Like you have your stock of mandazi, your stock of matoke, your stock of sugar for those who are doing business. So this is livestock, stock that has life. When you're planning for livestock, you have to, uh, uh, to be considerate because anything can happen. So the soil replacement rate is theoretical, but of course is highly practical. We encourage, most especially for farms with clear plants, we encourage you to have uh, uh, your theoretical soil replacement rates because uh, you want to maintain a certain production capacity 
at any given period of time. But this is something I don't encourage for very tiny farms. For farmers who are keeping below 10 sows, sometimes the issue of soil replacement uh, is, is not that important. You must judge your sows basing on their performance, but not uh, uh, a standard the soil replacement strategy. So to calculate the soil replacement, okay, to calculate the soil replacement, you have the, the soil replacement led. Uh, for those who are writing, you have to, to consider the number of liters, the soil longevity, soil lifetime up. Uh, maybe Walter will help you point at those uh, uh, figures so that you you can properly understand. So you must understand your soil lifetime. So the number of liters you expect from each cell. Okay. So after understanding the number of liters you expecting from that cell, you have to divide it by your following index, your following interval. You divide it by your following interval. So the answer you get, the answer you get, you divide it by 100. So when you divide the answer by 100, what you get is the soil replacement rate. What you get is the soil replacement rate. So if you used the data that we have up here, your soil replacement rate will be around 41.6. So you also have to consider the killing out percentage. The killing out percentage is simply the carcass yield of a given pig. I'll tell you from experience that carcass yield per genetic line is very different. There are some pigs that are poor, whose genetics are poor at carcass yield and genetics whose uh, capacity, whose carcass yield is, is very good. So carcass yield uh, uh, killing out percentage is, is actually very important. It tells you uh, the number of pigs that you need to keep on farm in order for you to attain your target production capacity. So in this example, we are considering a following, sorry, a killing out percentage of 70 kilograms. We are considering a killing out percentage of 70 kilograms. So after analyzing all this information, now we come to actual planning. How will our production look like? Okay. So you look at the number of sows up there uh, we realize that for us to generate at least 70 kilograms of pork, we need to keep at least 50 sows. I believe, Walter, you're seeing that number of sows equals 50. You can point at it so that uh, participants can be able to, to identify it easily. So uh, after analyzing the, that information, we come to the conclusion that we need a minimum of 50 sows on our farm if we want to produce at least 70 kilograms of pork. Uh, this means that we will have a minimum of 1,187.5 pigs sold annually, every year we will sell a minimum of 1,187.5 pigs. Don't worry about the decimals. They are very important when we come to such serious productions. So our soil replacement rate 
will be two sows. We will need two sows per month now. The question is, how do we come up with, uh, with the, these two sows? How do we come up with the two sows uh, per month? So what we do, we get our calculator. You remember our saw replacement rate. You can also get your calculator. You get your calculator, we calculate together. So you have 41.6 as your saw replacement rate. So unit rate is by 100%. So that is 41.6 divided by 100. If you have a calculator, 41.6 divided by 100, then the figure you get, you multiply it by your total population of sales on farm. Hope you got me, hope you got me. Okay, I'll repeat it. The saw replacement rate, uh, we discussed, and you can see that it is uh, 41.6 percent. So it is a percentage. So that that means that it is 41.6 divided by 100 times the total number of sours we have on farm. And like you can see, our total number of sours is 50. Okay. So you multiply it by 50 and you get about 20 point something. 20 point something, then you divide the 20 point something by, by 12 and what you will get is close to, to two cells per year. So you need to maintain at least two cells for, for replacing worn out cells every month. So down there, you can see that we have a teaser boa. A teaser boa is purposely for synchronizing estrus, the natural synchronization. Uh, this is more important in breeding management, which we'll be looking at later in our online coaching sessions. But a teaser boa is uh, very important for you to naturally induce your guilt into estrus. So this is a routine. You have to buy a, 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 a mature boa that is that uh, whose libido is very high and a bit aggressive. You introduce it to the guilds every day. It should be a small number of guilds, five to ten every day as you watch for the signs of heat from the guilds that are under exposure. So this is important that when you note the first estrus, the first heat period, you write down. This will help you to project when these guilds can come back on heat again. And this is a period of between 18 to 21, 22 days. So you miss that cycle and then you, 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 you wait for, 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 that, uh, uh, for that time range. So when the pigs come back in heat in that particular period of time, then this is the period for you to confirm the cycle of your pigs. This is the period for you to confirm the cycle of your pigs. Now you will know that my pigs come on heat, maybe ever after uh, 18 days after previous heat, 19 days after previous heat, 21 days after previous heat, or 22 days after previous heat. And if you're planning artificial insemination, work becomes easier. Uh, sorry, work becomes easier because you know when these guilds will actually be in heat. Okay, 
So that is the role of the teaser boa on farm, and we'll be discussing more about that in future when we are looking at uh, breeding management. So the bo semen, the bo semen, uh, you can see we need a minimum of 250 doses of semen annually. And this is based on um, double insemination. Double insemination meaning that each cell takes at least two doses of semen. And since our following index is 2.5, so we will have to multiply We will have to multiply um, we'll have to multiply our cells by 2.5. Okay, by the following index in order for us to get a picture of the amount of semen that we likely to, to need annually. This is just an average. It can slightly be more, so you got to consider that. And this brings us to the projected amount of pork that we'll be putting on market. So we'll be putting, we'll be selling a minimum of 83,125 kilograms of pork annually. So someone might wonder why we have 70 as our plan and then uh, the projection going to the market is, is more than 80 southern kilograms. This is because this is live, this is livestock business. You have to, you, you don't have to overstretch the limits because you never know what happens. If you have a order, an order of supplying about 70 kilograms of 70,000 kilograms of pork, it is very necessary for you to have more than that in order to avoid errors in your supply chain. Your supply chain must be consistent and your customer must be able to get the required number the required quantity of pork that they ordered before in every given period of time. Walter? Okay. So here down we want to understand following interval more. And uh, this, this is to help you understand because you remember we talked about it earlier. And I think it is very important that you understand how I came to the figures that um, I talked about above. So uh, the following interval is uh, basically simply defined by dividing the number, by dividing the number. Walter, please uh, remember to mute these guys. They keep forgetting and they are interrupting us. Uh, so the, the following index is determined by, by insemination after weaning. So these are basics and uh, this, this is the substance of management. And before you understand these issues, managing a pig farm becomes very complicated. So this makes up the substance of farm management. Insemination after weaning, your cells must come back in heat at least five days, in an average of five days after weaning. 
But South come back on heat from three days after winning. And how do you achieve this? Your sows must be managed properly. Feeding during lactation must be ideal. This is why we so much emphasize that uh, uh, when you're using the new science concentrates, at least to feed your lactating sows with that mixed with the pig 25%. Because if you use the poor quality soy, soy cake, the, this will affect not only the, the, the insemination interval, winning to insemination interval, but also the amount of Uh, sorry about that. Walter, let me speak to you. Can you still get me clearly? Yes, please. I can get you clearly. Okay. Can you get me now? Someone was calling my phone, so. Yeah, um, we are, you're loud and clear now. Okay, perfect. Um, so we are talking about how to determine uh, how the following index is determined. Um, um, insemination after weaning. I was telling you that if you pour a feed during lactation, your sows will need a little more time to come back on heat. You'll find out that uh, your sows take even, a sow can take even a month before showing signs of heat again. This will disturb your production cycles. So you have to be very careful. You have to be extra careful with that. Your sows must be fed well, must be fed right during lactation. And I was saying that we so much emphasize that you use the pig 25% when mixing feeds for, for your lactating sows because its proteins are 100% reliable. Imagine a situation where you used poor quality soy cake and sunflower, and then your pigs didn't get the collect amount of protein to be able to synthesize milk, but also to maintain their body condition score. Those pigs, those sows will delay coming on heat. So that is something that we must take as very important. So pigs will start coming back in heat after three days, uh, three days after weaning, but some will delay and come back on heat uh, after five, six, seven days, but the average is always five days. Okay, so the gestation period is always around 114 to 115 days. That is the average. Though some sows might follow a little earlier or longer up to something like 117 days. So those are issues that we have to really put into consideration. The lactation period, uh, this should be around 21 days, but of course with this following interval, we have uh, non-performing days. We have non-performing days. So you have days of, uh, 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 um, of, of, of introducing the sow into the following unit before its date of following. That time is also very important. And uh, the time that you need to clean up the following unit uh, before introducing other cells there. It's very important for you to have a following unit, even though it is not fitted with the following crates, for you to be able to manage 
your piglet health. So your lactation period should be around 21 days. The total number of days will equal to 140. If you added five to 114 to 21 days, you come up with uh, around 140 days. So if you divide these 140 days, you get 20 weeks. You get 20 weeks. And if you got this 140 days, divide it by, by the total days in the year. Okay. If you got, if the year has a, a 365 days, you divide by 140, you will come to a conclusion that the average, the average, what we would call the 100% following interval would be around 2.6. So each cell, if the farm is very, very well managed, something that is not achieved, uh, you have the following interval of 2.6. This means that a cell gives you 2.6 liters every year, okay? You expect 2.6 liters from each cell every year. This is of ambitious. It is not usually achieved. So you must be realistic. And uh, we got our following interval above uh, after uh, considering the possibilities of how many piglets, how many liters, and how good the management would be, but it is also an ambitious uh, following interval, the one that is listed uh, that we just talked about. Okay. Walter, please. Walt, are you there? We are losing time. Walter, next slide, please. I think I've lost my, okay. Haven't you missed a slide, Walter? Walter, can you go back a, a bit? I think you missed a slide. No, up. Okay, that's where we are. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's where we are. So number of liters per cell per year, like we just discussed, can be affected by the winning to breeding interval. These are things that you have to avoid. And uh, this is, this can only be avoided when you plan it from the start. And this is the only way that you can ensure proper management and proper management will make you successful, will make you avoid the challenges of getting a lower following interval than you would have got. So these factors include the winning to breeding interval, the time frame that you take from winning to, to, to insemination, which I already discussed, the winning age, which I've also discussed. So if you win after 80 weeks, you will have issues. You will have very serious issues. So it is important that you win early, make use of creep feed, and uh, you ensure that your piglets are not winned beyond 2080 days. The following rate, the number of pigs inseminated following. Like uh, if the following rate is, is very small, then you can even hardly, uh, you can hardly achieve your market pigs target in a year. So 
those are issues that uh, you really have to take very important. Misty heat periods. This is mainly due to poor heat detection. You didn't strain the stuff well, and this stuff cannot uh, properly identify pigs on heat, or they are not in control of uh, the guilt cell, uh, extra cycles. They are not properly managing the cells. They are not keeping records. So you miss the heat periods. And another very important issue is returns. You inseminate a sow, it comes back on heat. You know, these issues uh, disorganize your production cycles, but also they cost you money. These issues cost you money. The winning to breeding interval cost you money because you're going to be feeding these sows uh, for very many non-productive days. So it is going to be eating your feeds for free. The winning edge is going to delay your sow from coming back on heat again. So you're going to, to disorganize your following interval and that will as well cost you money. The missed heat periods means that you're going to feed these sows uh, during non-productive days and you pay money for the feeds. So the next liter will be very expensive. The heat returns is the same challenge. You're going to waste a lot of feeds. Okay. So now let's follow up with our example. I guess you're not lost. Uh, because we had to look at other, other issues and uh, we had to leave uh, we had to leave our main topic but all has been contributing to, to the same idea that we are looking at so all is important so the most ideal the most ideal batch number of batches must be five I don't want to go so deep into that because I think time won't be enough. But the most ideal number of batches must be five. So this means that you have to create because the number of batches gives you an idea on how you're going to manage housing. So when you have five batches, you got to think of uh, the dry saw unit and the gestating saw unit. And these units must be able to accommodate, each unit must be able to accommodate a minimum of uh, 10 cells, okay? Because 10 times five, we come back to the 40 cells that we are looking at. So each loom must be able to accommodate at least 10, uh, 10 guilds, 10 breeding sows. And uh, the loom must be ideal for also accommodating 10 gestating sows. So when you're constructing it, the idea should be on the gestating sows. If it can accommodate gestating sows, definitely it can accommodate guilds and uh, dry sows. So that's what you must look at. And uh, it's better to keep these pigs in groups because if you don't do that, then you need a, to build a lot of houses on farm and that will also cost you a lot of money. So it is better to, to group them and uh, raise them in their independent groups. The dry, saw, the dry saw unit can as well work as the, the gestating saw unit. Well, if you have enough money, you can separate them. Okay. And by the way, even though you don't have enough money, you can again choose to, uh, which is impossible anyway, which is impossible. So you need those number of houses. I was thinking about something, but it is not practical. Okay. 
So you need 10 following crates, all following places, because at each given time, T, you'll have 10 cells following. You also need to be sure that at each given time, T, you'll have 10 cells. So this means you'll have 10 cells uh, due for insemination, 10 cells due for following, 10 cells uh, due for lactating at a given interval of time, like we will be seeing later. And at the end of the day, you will have about 600 finishers ready for market at each given period of time. At Sorry, at a given interval, like we'll be seeing later, every year. Um, yes. So this takes us to a practical uh, explanation. So here we have pigs, pigs that have, um, we have pigs uh, that is, that are having, um, a period of time in between each activity of four weeks. By the way, before that, before you think about batch following, you must think about uh, the age. Uh, Walter, are you getting me? I can get you. I lost you for uh, okay. five seconds, about five seconds, but you're back. Okay, someone was calling again. Okay, Sawa. I guess everyone is, is, is getting me since you're getting me. Okay. So I was saying that um, before you think about proper batch, batching of your hand, you need to think about the age of these um, guilds that you're going to stock. And the age of these guilds must be in, in line with when you expect to take a particular group of animals to the abattoir. So the age of these pigs must be uniform. Each batch should have a uniform age. Okay, like you're seeing here, this is an example. We are taking an example of uh, pigs inseminated from uh, introduced into the farm and insemination started uh, in uh, January. Insemination is starting in uh, January. Excuse me. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, so I was saying that you have to follow the, the age groups. You have to follow the age groups and these age groups must also be in line with uh, the time you're expecting to go to the market. So your age groups must be in line with the time that you expect to go to the market. If you want to go to the market ever after four weeks, then your age groups must be depicting that. So here we are taking an example. 
and uh, it's based on the 50 cells that we are talking about. So for the 50 cells, we are batching them into groups of 10, 10 guilds. We are stocking now. We are at a level of stocking and then the, the other practices, they are not shown in the, in the table here, but uh, I'm trying to, to speak them out, then we'll come to this. So we start the, follow, the, the stocking. And uh, in this example, our pigs have a, an age difference of four weeks. Each batch of 10 guilds is uh, four weeks apart the other, okay? So that's why you're seeing that we are stocking uh, uh, pigs of 32 weeks, then pigs of 28 weeks from 32 to 28, four weeks in between, then 28 to 24 weeks, then 24 weeks to 20 weeks, and 20 weeks to 16 weeks. Okay, so this means that once insemination starts, because insemination is done at around 32 weeks, so once insemination starts for the first batch, we will be doing insemination every month until the batch of 16 weeks, that the, the batch that was introduced when 16 weeks old is inseminated. If you logically follow the table, you will understand what I'm talking about, okay? So the first batch, which is uh, of 10 pigs that are 32 weeks. Walter, hope you're still getting me. I got lost you. a bit. Huh? Yes, I'm, I'm back now. You. Yes, you're back. Perfect. Good. So I was saying that, um, okay, I was saying that uh, uh, the, our example is of pigs that, um, that are four weeks apart. And this means that once we start insemination, we will be inseminating ever after four weeks. So this means that we will be inseminating every month. And the batch of uh, uh, 32 weeks is ready for insemination. So we inseminate it. And um, we inseminate it possibly around 1st January. So we expect it to, to follow around, around the 1st of April, okay? We expect it to follow around the, the 1st of April. You can use the information shared above and try to determine um, the length of time, which is around 114, 115 days. So, uh, in the next month, the batch of 28 weeks will also be ready for insemination. It will be inseminated. Hello. It will be inseminated. Hmm? What are the some noise in the background? The batch of 28 weeks will be inseminated in the next month. <laughs> and that one, yeah. Trying to get who is that. Yeah, I've, you, you just mute all uh, to make sure that they are muted. Okay, I've done that. And I request you members, please mute your microphones. Mute your microphone so that Okay, so you disorganize me also when uh, things happen like that. So um, the, the, the batch of 28 weeks will also be ready for following, in, sorry, for insemination the next month. 
and it will follow around the 1st of May, okay? Same applies to the 24th, uh, for, to the batch of 24 weeks, the batch of 20 weeks, and the batch of 16 weeks. Now, what is interesting here, when you look at the column of fast following, is that you will have a batch of cells following every month, okay? There is a rhythm there. You have a batch of cells following every month. There is a batch following in April, a batch following in May, a batch following in June, a batch following in July, and a batch following in August. So after these batches following, lactating, okay, and the time they spend between uh, winning, the winning to breeding interval, you inseminate them again after three to five days. And these cells will be expected to follow again the first batch, which was 32 weeks, but now older, I think you can understand, will be following, will be having its next following, the second following on about uh, 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 on the 28th of August, okay? Then that is, that is almost after the first, the, the, the last batch of 16 weeks is getting out of the following unit. I think you can see that the last batch, the last batch of 16 weeks is in the following unit on 1st August. Sorry about the noise. The, the, first, the, first, the last batch of 16 weeks is in the following unit on 1st of August. So by the time it leaves the, fa the, 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 the following unit, the, the other batch is entering on the 28th of August. The first batch, of 30, which was 32 weeks, is also due for following. So it will be following. And after that one in September, you expect the next batch. In October, you expect the next batch. In November, you expect the next batch. And in December, you expect the next batch. I think you can now understand that there is work on farm continuously going on, okay? Let's go on, Walter. Okay, so here you go to the market. So the first batch, the first marketing, the batch of April, if you still remember, the batch of April will be going to the market end of September 2020. This, this, this was based on last year. It will be going to the market in September, end of September 2020. You see the next batch, which was 28 weeks, going to the market to the market in October 2020. The other batch of 24 weeks going to the market end of November of uh, uh, the batch of 24 weeks going to the market end of November. The batch of 20, 20 weeks, which was 20 weeks. Okay, sorry, the piglets from uh, these batches, they will go to the market in that stipulated time. So. For 20 uh, piglets from the batch of 20, which was 20 weeks, goes to the market end of uh, December, and um, piglets from the batch of 16 weeks goes to the market end of January. Okay? I guess you're now starting to sense something. There is a rhythmic, there is a systematic production strategy and a systematic marketing strategy that even makes your market aware that at every end of the month, I'm expecting a batch of X number of pigs from Farmer W, 
So your buyer will always be waiting for you after every given period of time, and they will be prepared for you. You'll be prepared to buy your stock. So this is why batch following you seen piglets from the first following, piglets from the second following comes up. Okay, you see how they are joining end of February. Remember the last one was in January, end of February. Another batch is ready for selling, which is coming from the second following. End of March, another batch is ready. End of April, another batch is ready. End of May, another batch is ready. And end of June, another batch is ready. And the cycle continues. So that is the importance of batch following, batch marketing, uh, batch insemination, batch everything. It is the importance of batching your farm production. It is the importance of planning your farm production cycles. Okay? This is the only way you can ensure proper management for your farm. We go on, Walter. Okay. Uh, like I told you at the start, uh, my technical assistant for the new science concentrates, and I still encourage you to, to try out these concentrates. They give you a chance to make feeds on your farm and uh, commercial standard feeds if you did everything as instructed. So, New science should be your feeding uh, strategy. And I know that you cannot regret the results. And lastly, Walter, I'm a writer. I have a book, uh, Farming Pigs for Money. The book is sold in Aristotle and Uganda Bookshop. I'm also producing a new book very soon. Uh, that I think will be interesting. I'm still deciding between just updating the one on market and coming up with another book. So maybe very soon I'll be deciding on that. But I guess it will be a very interesting book. So we have used quite a lot of time and uh, in real sense, we would not have time for, for questions, but uh, we should allow ourselves some questions. I think for the next 10, 15 minutes, if you have a question, please put up your hand. I'll start with those that are putting up their hands. And I'll also attend to some few questions and messages. Unfortunately today, for those who are watching from Facebook, I will not be able to attend to your questions. Those who are watching from Facebook and YouTube, you can comment your questions down. I'll uh, get time and uh, and answer and answer the questions. For now, I'll only attend to questions of those who are in the training room. So let's start with um, pork farm enterprises. How are you, sir? Yeah, now uh, my, uh, I'm Rock Farm Enterprises, but my name is Michael from Kenya. Yes, Michael. Yes, uh, now under the farrow, the, 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 the one you are saying, the, we, we group the farrowing. Huh? Sometimes uh, when, when you group the source, they may not get, they may not fall on it on the same uh, period. Or you, when you serve, you 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 group them from different maybe grouping. Yeah, I, I think I've got you. Yeah, yeah, for example, if I have uh, six uh, shows and uh, two, I serve two on the same day. I just group them as uh, the two and the same barrel. Or uh, initially I had separated three three. Okay. But now two are being served. Yeah. 
Okay. So, um, sorry, I didn't get your name, but that's fine. At least I have. My, lock, my lock name family. is Michael. Michael, but, but okay, Michael. Is okay. Yeah. Okay, Michael. Okay, Michael. Um, you see, when you choose to do batch following, you need to take synchronization very important. You have to make sure that uh, uh, your cells. You have to make sure that your cells all guilds are synchronized, so that they can come back in. No, 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 no. In fact, for the cells, you don't need much work. You need a lot of work for the guilds. Okay. And uh, if you're not going to use uh, pathetic hormones and you're working with groups of guilds of uniform age. Yeah. Yeah, and you're working with the group, groups of uh, guilds of, um, of the same age, you have to do synchronization. You have to do synchronization. And this synchronization, it's better to do the natural way. Bow exposure, like I talked about before, you have to introduce the the boa to, to these guilds to, to induce them into estrus. So after inducing them, after getting their first cycle, you should start this as early as possible, maybe at 20 weeks, because these guilds can be disseminated at around seven to, to eight weeks, sorry, to around uh, 30 to, to 32 weeks. So you should to start it as early as you can, so that you can take a control of their, uh, of their cycles. You expose them to the boa, they come on hit the first time, you record. Then you check around after 18 to 21, 22 days uh, to see if they are in heat again. The reason why you're checking is to establish if their cycle is consistent. And once you establish the, the length of their cycle, then you can easily plan insemination. So that means that these guilds also will come in heat in a relatively uh, related time frame. They will come in heat in a relatively related time frame. So you must take that important. Where you're not using uh, the natural way of synchronization, you can use hormones. We can talk about hormones privately because it is not something that I want to encourage you to, to, encourage you to do. So in case you don't want to use the natural way, let's talk about uh, sorry, synchronization using uh, synthetic hormones, but that's not the right way to go. The natural way is the better way, very effective and very affordable, or even very cheap. Hope you understood me. And once you do that, you'll have your cells cycling in the same period of time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So let's now listen to Mr. Sekavira Gerald. So thank you for the presentation. You're welcome, Gerald. My challenge is that my I have my soul because they are four of them. Four of them kept the farot and they are just making a man just recently pregnant. But wool is loose. This one started some three weeks ago, but I thought it will go sometime, but it is still failing. I don't know what the cause could be. Could you please help me out? You're, you're breaking. I couldn't get your question clearly. Uh, then what you happened? Please... Okay, can I'm you put saying, your question in there? Yes. I'm saying mm. my sores have your loses tool. Those Losing ones what? which farod and those ones loses tool. Oh, loses tool. Okay. Their stool is loose. I don't know what the challenge could be. I thought it will go, but it is failing. 
those yeah, that most, followed and those that are still present? Uh, most probably you have to check the nutrition, Gerald. But uh, beyond that, I will request you to invite a veterinarian to your farm to to try to establish what actually the problem is. Uh, for such cases, it is very difficult to really give you a conclusive answer uh, online, mm. but uh, I'll request you to involve your vet, or you can go to my inbox, maybe take a pictures of the stool and send it to me, and let's try to, to, to uh, add uh, knowledge with other people and try to establish. But I so much mm -hmm. think that the, the issue might be with, uh, with the nutrition, but I can't tell anyway. Mm -hmm. So we need to really probe more in order for us to come up with uh, a conclusive uh, answer over that. So thank you. I'll be sharing my right, number in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. It's on WhatsApp, so you can contact me via WhatsApp and, and we keep thinking together. So let's now listen to Mr. You. Kamale James. You're welcome. Mr. Tamale James. Okay. You're breaking, James. No, maybe you put your question in the chat. Possibly you could write down the question. Please write down your question in the chat. Uh, I okay. can't, I can't, yeah, please. Okay, let's now go to Mr. Barnabas. Okay. Mr. Barnabas Tinkasimi. Okay, seems Mr. Barnabas is not, uh, Mr. Barnabas Tinkasimi is not there. Okay, Yuvani. I am on. Oh, please go on. Mm, thank you very much, uh, mm, Mr. Molindwa. Um, <clears throat> I am into mobilizing ordinary people, I mean the ordinary Ugandan, mm. to go into farming, particularly those who have small land holding, uh, into high value technologies, be it goats, be it pigs, be it even crops. Uh, I've found you when you had already moved ahead, but uh, I found you talking about uh, insemination. Uh, when you are choosing uh, the semens, what, what type of bulls are these that give you uh, the semens? Two, um, with your experience, uh, what is the best bull currently that give you the best technology? Three, uh, issues to do with marketing, because when you mobilize people, they do what you have told them, they return to you uh, about issues of the market. Um, you will find uh, an ordinary person having around the uh, 20 pigs, he wants to sell them, and uh, they give them a very laughable money. A pig which has uh, fed uh, with, uh, with over, over, over maybe uh, 500,000, they are giving, uh, they are giving 300,000. So through this network, how best can we uh, solve the issues of those people uh, who are who are looking for where to sell they, they, they are pigs who which have matured that is in terms of, of pork uh, where maybe I, I came in late i saw something 70 uh, 70 kilograms 
of pork, I did not understand what you meant. And uh, it was for what? Okay. I ran a farm in Kagadi. Currently, we are having, I think, uh, 150 pigs. I myself am in the, in the chat room. I was informed by my wife, who is the direct manager. She's also in the chat room. Okay. Hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, you're sounding like uh, the honorable himself. It's so, true. oh, glad to have you here, honorable. Um, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the questions. Um, so on, on, on the issue of the Boas, we have a challenge in Uganda and uh, most probably people like you can really support us. Uh, there is no registered breeder of uh, pigs and um, our national breeding institution has not really done enough to enable introduction of uh, modern genetics into the country. The country is suffering consistent inbreeding and unplanned crossbreeding that has led to production of inferior animals, animals that are not uh, of value, that do not return value when uh, money is invested. So for now, what we do to mitigate the challenge, we are importing semen from uh, Choice Genetics. And this is got from their stud in, um, in Germany. Uh, we were a little disturbed by the lockdown, but uh, this is what we are doing to assist people who are into serious commercial productions. We have to import semen of, uh, of uh, very productive pig lines. So on uh, the question of best boas, of course, there are many boas in, in the world today. Uh, but the target of these boas is basically on, uh, on meat. They are bred for, for meat, the quantity of meat, the percentage of meat in a carcass for fat, the reduction of the back fat layer so that we have pork with less fat, the growth. Uh, to have offsprings that grow a little faster than the normal, uh, these other uh, ordinary pigs, and the feed conversion ratio, to have pigs that need a little less feed to fatten to the slaughter weight than the usual pigs that uh, are available. So today we no longer talk about the type of uh, breed, whether landless, okay, landless is not used as a paternal, but whether duro. or peer train, a paternal breed that is ideal for those four qualities. The issue of market, uh, Uganda has two types of pork markets. We have what we refer to as the ordinary market, and we have what we refer to as the premium market. The ordinary market is the usual market, and uh, its uh, trading systems are highly informed. This combines the pork joints and uh, the pork butchers and some few pork eating restaurants. So these guys don't care about the quality of pig that you're selling to them. They can buy pigs of 15 kilograms as long as they can produce meat. They can as well buy pigs of 70 and above kilograms, but they are not that sensitive about quality. They are not sensitive about drug withdrawal periods. So sometimes when their pigs get sick, they administer drugs and uh, the pigs don't get okay. They tend to sell the pigs and uh, the market will consume. They also do not consider the quality of the pigs sold. Uh, in the ordinary market, we usually have worn out sows. Like when your sow, is exhausted on the farm, your boa is exhausted on the farm, you call a butcher man to, to take it for slaughter. So that is the pork that is common in um, ordinary place, uh, 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 in uh, the ordinary market. 
On the other hand, the premium market is very sensitive. And many premium pork buyers prefer buying imported products. I don't want to mention some of these, the names of uh, the places where this pork is got. But uh, if you went to many premium places, you will find the pork got from outside. This is because the quality of that pork is ideal because in the premium market, we only want to slaughter pigs that are 24 to 28 weeks because these pigs are tender. The meat doesn't smell and it's, it's, it's nice pork in general. And we need pigs that can produce a carcass that are of carcasses weighing not below 65 kilograms because underweight pigs are very hard to process. They are very hard to process uh, because they lack meat. They mostly con uh, compose dog bones. So these type of pigs are very difficult for majority of the average farmers to, to produce, most especially those who do not have the advantage to access the correct information necessary for them to do the work or even the finances to invest in uh, production systems that can lead them to producing quality uh, pigs. But once this is done, uh, always we can work together to, to do arrangements and see how to penetrate the market as a group, because the challenges we face currently is that supply of premium pigs is never consistent. There is no supplier in Uganda who, okay, there are some, but uh, at another level, and there are very few. There are like three to four farms that are really having collective batches and that are capable of selling pigs for slaughter every month. But majority of farmers in Uganda they can only supply worn out pigs, or even if they supply, they manage to supply quality pigs, they can only do it either once or twice a year. There is no consistency. So on the side of the pigs, uh, the 70% carcass of pork, um, I was talking about the killing out percentage. The pigs, slaughtered pigs of modern genetics must generate a carcass of uh, not below 70 kilograms. So if a pig is slaughtered at 100 kilograms live weight, it should produce a carcass of at least 70 kilograms uh, carcass weight. So uh, that is the new um, averages for pigs that are uh, being raised for, for slaughter. Let me hope I've answered you, Honorable. I think we can have more time maybe to engage more and uh, uh, I can explain in case something is not clear. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, for now, let's go to, to Infinix Note 4. I think we will not take any more questions. We have, we have okay. uh, one, two, three, four. We have five questions to attend to, and that will be the end. So after Infinix Note 4, we will hear from Sam. Sam. Then after Sam, after Sam, we will hear from um, We'll hear from uh, Mollis, and after Mollis, we'll hear from Charles, and I'll stop uh, uh, questions from uh, people putting up your, uh, their hands. Then I'll go to, to the messages to see the, 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 those I can attend to. So let's go on uh, in Phoenix Note 4. James, I will attend to your question in the message. I'll make sure that I attend to it. So if it's not for, please go ahead and tell us your name, because I guess this is not your name.
Okay. I think Infinix is not ready. So let's go to Sam. Mr. Chebunja, Sam, please. Hello, good evening, Mr. Molindwa. Good evening. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you for this opportunity. This platform has really um, have engaged us all uh, in, in this business. Uh, previously, I came here. Uh, my first time I had a problem with my farm, I explained, and then all of a sudden, all of goodness, I got someone from this group. Uh, it was called Mr. Tobo. I want to send special thanks to him. I know he's, 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 he's in the meeting right now, this meeting. Um, he sold me a, a, a pregnant girl. Um, it was about uh, two months to, 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 to give birth, and then he made sure that they the animal reached my farm safely. He drove it to my farm safely in Katosin. And then uh, last week, uh, it gave birth to 11 healthy ones. They are very big. So, uh, and, and I was able to acquire, um, to, uh, to, to add up with the one I had before. And right now, my farm is growing with 17 pigs. Um, my issue is about uh, heat, heat detection. For me, I don't have a bore on my farm and, and I don't know how I'll be able to detect um, the, the heat for this so. So, and then uh, the next question is about um, when do I stop breastfeeding the piglets and when do I start giving them the feeds? Those are my questions. Thank you for, for the question. And a big thank you to Ms. Tobo for the assistance we gave you uh, that is uh, that is very good, and it's good that you met him from this uh, forum. So, on when you can um, win your piglets, this depends on um, the weight of the piglets, because if you win two light piglets, uh, their chances of dying will be very high. So it is better that you win piglets that are six kilograms and above. And uh, that will increase their survival rate. Um, uh, on the issue of heat detection, I think I, I thought I had done some good job here, but uh, I will request you to contact me privately because then we need to discuss something at length for you to, to understand this. I shared my number in the chat. So you can WhatsApp me. I might delay the reply, but I will surely reply to you. So I will discuss something in detail to help you manage heat detection on your farm. Hope I've been helpful. So let's now go to, to Molly's. Oh, one more question you didn't answer. I'm sorry for interruption. Uh, I asked about uh, when, when specifically should, should uh, when, when will I start feeding my piglets? Uh, uh, when will I start giving them feeds? How old are the piglets? Uh, they have made one week and one day today. So you should uh, buy for them creep feed if you want. If you want to do early weaning, uh, this is the time for you to introduce them to creep feed. Make sure that you manage creep feed very well because uh, it's an expensive feed, and you don't want the sow to to eat it. And uh, ensure that your piglets consume a minimum of at least half a kilogram of creep feed from the date of introduction to weaning. If you introduce creep feed, it will be easier for you to, 
to, to be easier for you to have these uh, piglets uh, wind at about 21 to 28 uh, days. So creep feed will help you boost their weight, but also accustom their digestive system to solid feeds. So that is something that you should, uh, you know, try out. We have creep feed, Babista Safe from New Science. It is a ready to feed uh, feed. So you can ask me more, I will uh, direct you. Uh, it's uh, an, uh, a commercial standard the creep diet. Yeah, I asked Loretta about about them and then the person you you gave me from Ave, Ave Mamukono, um, I think they don't have uh, creep fits right now because I'd already sent them some messages. And I told them if they get, they let me know within this this period. I don't know if you'll be able to fix that that that, that issue for me. I'll be thankful. Otherwise, okay. thank you so much for everything. Thank you ma You're so welcome. much for for, for for what you gave for us. You're welcome. And and uh, let's discuss that. Uh, let's discuss that and see what options will be available for you to to utilize. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So let's now hear from um, Mollis. Mollis, please. All right. I want to thank you sir, for the program. You're welcome. I want to understand something about the batch following. I want to know the minimum number I want to start with. When you, start, when you want like to do batch far away. Okay. Uh, Mollis, like I said already, uh, batch following depends on, uh, on several factors. And one of them is your target income uh, annually. Your target income, your resources, the resources available to to manage this farm, to buy feeds, to buy the genetics, to pay the workers. And uh, it also depends on what you want to put on the market. Of course, what you want to put on, 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 on market comes from, um, comes from uh, the average income that you want to make uh, per year from, uh, from these pigs. So, Batch following can even be can even be carried out with uh, five sows. Like I said, that batches of five are the best. You can have five sows with one sow following every month, and everything will flow as uh, as expected. You can use ten sows where you have batches of batches of two sows following every month. You can have 20 sows, you can have 30, you can have 40, you can have 50, whichever number. So from five, you can really call out uh, a systematic batch following uh, strategy. Hope you got me and hope you've understood. Yes, I got you. Thank you so much. Great. Let's hear from Charles now. Charles, please. Okay, seems Charles is not there. <clears throat> or the network is disturbing him. So I'll now attend to a few questions in messages in the chat. But unfortunately, time is not on our side. Uh, though, let me try my level best to go through okay 
Uh, at what age a piglet separated males from females? <laughs> this might not be necessary. You can even keep them together until you go to the market. Um, you know, you go to the market at around 24 to 28 weeks. And many of these boys will not be in puberty yet. So uh, there is no problem. But alternatively, you can castrate them and um, have them uh, castrated so that you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, does it hold water to separate the pieces? You have a verse at that. How much is that new science concentrate? I request you to reach me, uh, WhatsApp me, 0773422445. And Uganda country code is 256. So don't know how to WhatsApp me, I'll send you the details. Since the example of batch, batching is a mother bird, does that mean that four weeks is the recommended age to win? Definitely. Definitely, you shouldn't exceed the four weeks if you want the batch following system to work. What is the average weight of a two-month piglet? It depends on how you feed it. And it will be about uh, 18 to 20 kilograms. How will you, and it depends also on the genetics, how will you acquire the 30 to 28, 24 guilt? Do you buy them or grow them? If you grow them, then they will be eating your feet. You can acquire them. You agree with your supplier to supply you every month. You don't, you don't need to stock them at once. You can agree with your supplier to give you pigs every month. Give you pigs of 32 weeks, 22 weeks, 24 weeks. Or even stock pigs of 32 weeks every month. You know, you stock 32 weeks old pigs this month, then stock 32 weeks old pigs next month. You still come to the same uh, answer. Can a castrated boa serve? Hey, can a castrated boa serve a teaser boa? I've not understood your question. A teaser boa is not for use on farm. It's for, it is not for use. It is not for breeding purposes. It is just for teasing, for inducing guilts into estrus and helping in detection of heat on farm. Hi, Mr. Murindua, I'm Tony. How best can I avoid the pigs on my farm to catch swine fever when immediate neighbors? Please uh, build a farm around, a fence around your farm, restrict visitations. African swine fever is a highly contagious disease. It is a contact disease. So once your pigs are not in contact with any infected pig or object, they will not get the virus. So make sure to implement proper biosecurity for your farm to stay healthy. Uh, Emmanuel is saying some of my, his sows are eating up the piglets they produce. This puts me in a loss. This sometimes is due to uh, poor nutrition, but it is also a vice that is sometimes genetical. It is a vice that is sometimes genetical, and on commercial farms, we don't allow such things. So that's why you always have a sow to replace such bad mothers. So once you get a bad mother, you eliminate it and replace it with uh, an ideal sow. So if they do this twice, you have to eliminate them from the farm. Sometimes the vice is genetical. Excuse me, what would be the average weight of a two-month piglet? I think I've answered that. I can begin a project, a bigger project with 500K. How can I use it? That is difficult for me to answer, but we can keep discussing. Please uh, message me on WhatsApp. An artificially inseminated pig gave birth to only four piglets. What could have been the problem? This might have been due to poor heat detection, but also uh, uh, poor nutrition. When a sow or a guilt is inseminated, 
you have to reduce the amount of food that you give it in its earlier stages of, of gestation because excessive nutrient intake might interfere with implantation. And therefore, some fertilized eggs might be uh, ably absorbed by the body. But also, uh, poor heat detection, whereby the uh, uh, cells or goods were inseminated at a time when they were almost getting off uh, uh, their uh, receptive time. And uh, it can also be an issue of the quality of semen used. The quality of semen used may be the percentage of viable sperms in the semen was very low. And so that led to the small litter size. But also the outflow. Maybe the technician who did the AI was not good at the practice and so did do it very well. Um, what is the right time to inseminate after so deliver? This should be between three to seven days. So your sow must be back in heat and ready for insemination between three to seven days. <laughs> Daniel, I will not read your question, but uh, you know, they are decision makers in our systems. So that's why sometimes we have to really attend to them. Um, Leo, advice on the good timing for winning. I've already answered that. Is it true that with AI it gives fewer piglets? That's not true, but it can happen due to the reasons that I just explained. Uh, Delphine, you're following from Rwanda. You're trying to embark on modern farming of pigs, but the issues of diseases, markets, breeds are challenging. Yes, you need to work together to solve that, uh, Delphine. Please share your number. My number, I've already shared it, but I'll share it again. So that is my WhatsApp number. You can reach me via WhatsApp. It's better WhatsApp, better WhatsApp than, um, than a phone call. How can a pig farm access artificial insemination? Sandra, we can discuss. And in Nuwa, how do we access this book available in Aristotle and Uganda bookshop? How do you ensure that the teaser board does not impregnate the sows? You must be available when you are exposing your guilt to the, to the teaser boa, and you must ensure that you don't expose it to guilt that are on, on heat. Ensure that you first detect heat before you introduce the teaser boa. All these guilt must be confined in, uh, in following in, uh, in stalls. How do you handle following if I am not using AI? The question is not clear, and therefore I can't give a good answer. But Sandra, you can uh, you can ask the same question using uh, uh, the WhatsApp message. Otherwise, I thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for taking part in this online coaching session. Uh, we still have a lot of session coming up in. in um, uh, uh, coming weeks. I thank you very much, Walter, for working with me today. You're welcome, uh, thank sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, because it might have been difficult if you really did uh, 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 help us. Uh, you know, Uganda, uh, uh, the, 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 the electricity, you know, is, 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 is always challenging. But good enough, we've been able to successfully conduct this uh, uh, session. I thank you very much. Thank you for participating. Until next time, I wish you a good night and a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye all, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.